Well, hello! Today I'd like to welcome you to my review of a Norwegian pen. This is a vintage Pond Senior. So let's take a look at it. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And maybe you know something about copyrights, maybe you know something about Pond, uh, maybe you know some other exotic Scandinavian brands. I don't know, but please feel free to leave a comment down below. So the Pond Senior kind of looks like a Parker Vacumatic. Or uh, I think Visconti came out with a finish like this recently. Just a ringed celluloid, of course, Pond Senior. Uh, not much else on the barrel, although, you know, I could spend a lot of time looking at that barrel. <laughs> uh, the finial hides a button filler, which I had to restore. Uh, and this doesn't sit quite right. I couldn't find quite the right length for the, the drawing a blank there, the, the spring inside. Uh, so I had to do some adjusting, and uh, it works now, but that was a bugger to get it working. Also, a lot of cleaning to go with it. Um, kind of like on a P Platinum 3776, the uh, celluloid version. It looks like it's folded there. I don't see the same thing on the barrel. Don't know what that means. Just a point of interest. And then the finial, cap finials, nothing special. Oh, and I think I pointed out. Holy cow. Ha! I'll come back to that. Uh, so on the nib. Grand Tour. PP. And then, oh boy, let's turn it just slightly. See if that can come up better. I can't tell if you can make that out, so I'll just read it to you. It's first K Val and then a 14 carat is what's written on it. And then the feed is so it's a 14 karat gold nib, in other words. And the PP is pawn pen. Or whatever the Norwegian equivalent of pen is. So uh um uh, about a week ago I've been doing a lot of cleaning and stuff around the house as I was turning anyway I found this box of crayons I'm looking at it and going what why do I have a box of crayons and I figured it out I was advised at one point this summer that I should fill in these with like crayons so they can be read better but you know what on the preview screen I think it shows up just fine so I'm gonna leave it so what you're interested in is seeing this lovely pen write. And if you tuned into my review of the uh, Pond 52 that I did quite some time ago, I don't remember exactly when, but I put a link down in the comment or down in the video description. I put a lot of links down, down there. I'll get into them after I film this review. But anyway, I uh, have a review of the Pond 52 where I get more into the history of the brand. Uh, the ink in this pen is Giban. And I th I hear that this brand has done some rebranding lately, but at the time I bought it, this is what it was called, so we're going to go with it. Lie de Te. Lie de the. Just kind of, you know, I'm not normally a brown ink person, but I kind of like this one. Uh, flex. Uh, somebody suggested in the one of the pens in use that I did where this pen got it got to show up that this is probably a Bach nib, probably not made by Pawn. And I don't see a reason to disagree them with them. A lot of pens had Bach nibs back then, and it definitely has the characteristics of a Bach nib. Uh, wetness and flow. I don't think we're going to argue. I mean, the S is still wet up there in the senior. Not a pen that has trouble keeping up. 
And this pen is almost empty. I inked it up quite some time ago and it actually holds its seal quite well. Yeah, that was beautiful. Uh, but I've done a lot of writing with it, so. And that's not me trying to flex it particularly. There's me particularly trying to flex it. Wee, yeah, much wetter. And then uh, reverse writing. For those who are into that kind of thing. And, and sometimes I find that these more flexible nibs aren't as good at reverse writing. Sometimes I find that they're wonderful at it. But I'm more likely to find one not good at it. And this would be one of them. Blech. All right, let's try a longer form quote. And finally, new test that I like to do, the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. Okay, so it looks like it was skipping there, but it really wasn't. Uh, because I is writing fast, it actually makes, if I go fast, see? Well, I put a little pressure there. And I'm at the right angle, it makes a very fine hairline. Um, which tells me up here, I probably was writing with a little bit heavy hand. Up here in the S, not so much. Uh, it does keep up very well. But the hairline is, of course, let's see if I can do it again. Quite fine. Uh, my preview, it looks like it disappeared there. I'll be curious to see when I edit the video together if it actually did disappear. So that's the, the Pond Senior. This is a pen, again, made in Norway. Uh, down in the links you can find the whole story of Pond Pen. And if you look at the very last link, that's my review for the Pond 52, where I go through a bit of the story. Uh, one of the interesting links in there, which I didn't understand when I originally did the Pond 52 review, was a vintage advertisement for Pond Pens where they're throwing the Pond Pen at a target. And then they show, you know, various people writing with the pen. Now, I got why the various people were writing with the pen. They were just saying, look, pond pen is for everybody, from school kids on up to businessmen and women and, you know, whatever. Um, you know, 1950s, sorry. But uh, I didn't get the throwing it to the target. Well, just so happens I went to high school with somebody from Norway. Uh, she wasn't an exchange student, she just, for whatever reason, was living in my little small town. Um, but anyway, I've been Facebook friends with her, and I posted this video on Facebook, and she explained it for me. Uh, so apparently throwing it at, at a target is actually in reference to a Norwegian saying that, you know, the pen is on target, or, or on point. It's uh, good, in other words. So, uh, interesting. I'm, I'm hoping that no pens were harmed in the filming of that advertisement. I did want to include it here. Uh, I wrote several people, uh, both at that link, and then they gave me further links to pursue, or further email addresses, I apologize. Uh, but the further email addresses just apparently, I don't know, either didn't speak English, thought it was spam, or... Uh, just thought, yeah, you're not even worth a reply, dude. So, that's why I'm not including the video footage here. It, I don't want to violate somebody's copyright, so I won't. And, uh, yeah, maybe I could get away with the fair use argument, but it doesn't seem like the right place to do it. Because I'm not truly transforming it, I'm just showing it as part of this. So, we'll leave it there. Uh, but I do strongly suggest you check check it out. And again, the link is down in the in the video description. 
Um, but I just found it interesting, Pon Pen, a Norwegian brand, not one you hear talked about much on Fountain Pen Network. In fact, if you look up the links, you know, you could try Googling Pon Pen, I'm a lot of the top links. A little scary. Uh, you'll find my Fountain Pen Network thread on the pen, and you'll find a link to my video, and I can't remember if you find a link to my blog post on it or not. But anyway, I kind of cool, but kind of sad that I'm the main entry on it. So uh, yeah, I'd love to see more people posting about this pen, and or this brand, I should say, and uh, perhaps getting more information out there. So, uh, I want to thank you for watching, and if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, if you do know more about Pond Pen, I would love for you to post down in the comments. They do no longer exist, which is sad. Um, but, yeah, if you know anything, please feel free to post. I would love to know more. And... You know, my curiosity is somewhat piqued. There will be a Swedish pen showing up eventually. Um, are there... I, I would be curious, you know, about a Finnish pen now. From Upper Scandinavia. I actually do have a Danish pen. I can't remember if I've reviewed it or not. I may have two Danish pens, come to think of it. Anyway, uh, if I haven't reviewed them, look forward to that at some future date. <laughs> uh too many pens to review I think so uh, yeah I'd be interested in more Scandinavian pens and I'm always interested in exotic brands you know the anybody knows of an African fountain pen that's a whole continent I haven't touched um, South America would be another continent I haven't touched I'm pretty sure there is no such thing as a Antarctic pen but you know, if there is let me know um, so want well, to thank you for watching We'll see you later. Bye-bye.